the true history of mankind, is far more fascinating than what mainstream scholars and history books are telling us. Did you know that there are ancient texts that date back thousands of years, mentioning vehicles controlled by the mind, technologies like levitation, anti-gravity, and spaceships coming from other planets? In fact, there are so many things that have been left out of history books on purpose, as if society is not meant to know about the true history and origin of mankind. One fascinating subjects in this hidden history are the countless accounts we find of gods traveling the world in advanced flying vehicles. Accounts of beings coming down from the heavens in what are described as powerful technological machines that produced fear-inducing sound while making the ground shake like a million earthquakes and spitting fire are descriptions that many of us would attribute to rocket or space shuttle launches or landings. We know that these machines are not the vehicle of the gods and they are just some of the many vehicles created by humans. However, if we were to travel back in time, 2000 or 3000 years and witness the same thing, how would we react? Imagine yourself, seeing a reusable rocket land for the first time ever 3000 years ago. What would you say, what would you do? Would you not say it must be the work of gods, because until that moment you've never seen anything like that. You were unaware of technology beyond sticks and stones. Such an event must have been life-changing for anyone witnessing it. Curiously, similar accounts can be found all across the planet, where ancient civilizations witnessed how the gods came down from heaven, riding dragons, which spit fire and smoke, or mighty chariots, that could sail across the sky. Thousands of years ago, people faced forces beyond their understanding. Hence, mankind produced a mythology based on all of these fascinating events. But what if these ancient mythologies are not just mythologies, but perhaps a great ancient history source? In ancient times it was universally accepted that human civilization was a gift from the gods. Whether you look in ancient Egypt, Mesopotamia, Greece, Scandinavia, India, China, Africa, America, or elsewhere, most ancient cultures believed that the gods brought them the necessary technology to develop as a civilization. They brought them agriculture, writing, medicine, and everything else worth having. The mythology of the Eskimos says that the first tribes were brought north, who were brought there by divine beings who flew them on board machines with bronze wings. The oldest sagas of the Native Americans. Mention of Thunderbird, that introduced fire and fruit to them. What if ancient civilizations misinterpreted alien visitors and called them gods? The ancient Mongolian cultural narrative, that recounts mythology and history, called the Pope, tells us that the gods were able to recognize everything, the universe, the four cardinal points of a compass, and even the round shape of the earth. So does it not make you wonder what were the Eskimos talking about when they were referring to metal birds, why do the Indians mention a thunderbird, how were the ancestors of the ancient Mullians able to deduce that the earth was round? If we look at ancient India, we will discover what many are referring to as the most fascinating ancient texts of all time. Ancient India has one of the most extensive histories in the world, and their greatest ancient texts called the Vivas, are one of the greatest ancient writings on our planet. Interestingly, these ancient texts, which date back thousands of years, talk about flying ships that visited our planet 6,000 years ago. Compass Denver Dick Sanskrit The texts constitute the oldest layer of Sanskrit literature and the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Many consider these ancient texts fascinating and confusing at the same time. There is a mass of incredible information about flying machines, even fantastic science fiction weapons, that can be found in translations of the Viva scriptures, Indian epics, and other ancient Sanskrit texts. In all of these ancient texts we encounter the flying vehicles used by the gods which are called Vimana. The word Demona is Sanskrit and has multiple meanings. 
What is interesting, is that in modern Hindu language, the word Vyamond means aircraft. While there are many who oppose the existence of the Vimana, millions of people around the world are concerned that thousands of years ago ancient mankind was visited by incredible flying machines piloted by ancient alien visitors. A reference to the ancient Dimona, can be found in the Mahabharata, which is one of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India. At Rama's behest, the magnificent chariot rose up to a mountain of cloud, with a tremendous din. Another passage reads, Beam flew with his Vimana on an enormous ray, which was as brilliant as the sun and made a noise like the thunder of a storm. If we look at the Ramayan, a Avec epic dating back to the 4th century BC, we will find one passage that describes Vimana, as a chariot that resembles the sun, and how this aerial chariot had the ability, to travel anywhere at will. It resembles a cloud of light in the sky. This was the Pushpika, the Vimana of Ravana, who is the hero of the great Hindu epic, which describes the Pushpika as follows. The bush chariot, that resembles the sun, and belongs to my brother, was brought by the powerful Ravana, that aerial and excellent chariot going everywhere at will. That chariot resembling a bright cloud in the sky, and the King Rama, got in and the excellent chariot at the command of the Rick era rose up into the higher atmosphere. The Vimanas is described in the Mahabharata. Even give measurements for one of the Vimanas, it is described, as having twelve cubits in circumference, with four strong wheels, that are approximately, 20 to 25 feet in circumference, about 7 feet in diameter. According to many ancient texts, these Vimanas were used to transport the gods through the heavens. The ancient text, called the Vimanaka Shastra or the Science of Aeronautics, mentions incredible details of vehicles controlled by the mind, thanks to a lost technology which was accessed by ancient cultures. But not only do these fascinating writings mention vehicles, controlled by the mind, they detail fascinating technologies, like levitation, and anti-gravity, futuristic technologies that were present on Earth, over 6,000 years ago. Many researchers consider the sacred book of the Vimanaka Shastra, as a guide to space spaceships, and interstellar travel. In this incredible ancient text, there is a description of a Vimana as following. An apparatus, which can go by its own force, from one place to place, or globe to globe. To understand what the Vimanaka Shastra is telling us, we turn to a well-known Sanskrit scholar, called Dr. Raghavan, who has written over 120 books, and 1200 articles, and won the Academy Award for Sanskrit, in 1966. Dr. Raghavan points out the following. The text's revelations, become even more astounding, 31 parts of which the machine consists, are described, including a photographing mirror underneath, the text also enumerates 16 kinds of metal that are needed to construct the flying vehicle, but only three of them are known to us today. The rest remain untranslatable. According to Dr. Raghavan, these fascinating ancient Indian texts speak about humans, that lived on other planets, and alien beings that visited our ancestors, thousands of years ago. Dr. Raghavan, is quoted saying the following. Fifty years of researching this ancient work, convinces me that there are living beings, on other planets, and that they were visiting the Earth, as far back as 4000 BC, there is just a mass of fascinating information, about flying machines, even fantastic science fiction weapons, that can be found in translations of the Vedas, scriptures, Indian epics and other ancient Sanskrit texts. There are many other scholars and authors who agree with Dr. Raghavan. Another authority who agrees with Dr. Raghavan's interpretations, is Dr. Ravi Krishnamurti, Professor of Aeronautics at the Indian Institute of Science. Dr. Krishnamurti says the following. It is true that the ancient Indian, Vedas and other texts, refer to aeronautics, spaceships, flying machines and ancient astronauts. A study of the Sanskrit texts, has convinced, me that ancient India did know the secret of building flying machines, and that those machines, 
were patterned after spaceships coming from other planets. The Vimanas could cover great distances. They were enviable and maneuverable space vehicles. The predecessors of the flying Vimanas of the Sanskrit epics are the flying chariots employed by various gods in the Vedas. In the Mahabharata, we find the following text. Gurkha flying in his swift and powerful Vimana, hurled against the three cities of the Vrishis and Andhakas. A single projectile, charged with all the power of the universe, an incandescent column of smoke and fire, as brilliant as ten thousand suns, rose in all its splendor. It was the unknown weapon, the iron thunderbolt, a gigantic messenger of death, which reduced to ashes the entire race of the richness and Andhakas. Using the help of the Vimana, ancient astronauts, visited different places on our planet, fought wars against each other, and spread knowledge and wealth among ancient primitive civilizations. But what fueled and powered the Vimana? According to the Vimanuka Shastra, the Vimana used a proportion system based on a combination of gyroscopes, electricity, and mercury. The propulsion of the Venus is by a mercury vortex engines, a concept similar to electric propulsion. In the Vimanuka Shastra, we find the following details about Vimana. Strong and durable. Must the body of the Vimana be made, like a great flying bird of light material inside one must put the mercury engine, with its iron heating apparatus underneath by means of the power latent in the mercury which sets the driving whirlwind in motion. A man sitting inside may travel a great distance in the sky. The movements of the Vimana are such that it can vertically ascend vertically. Descend moves slanting, forwards and backward. With the help of the machines, human beings can fly in the air, and heavenly beings can come down to earth. However, many people argue that a far greater, more accessible and free power source was available to the ancient demonic craft. It is noteworthy to mention that a couple of years ago, Chinese researchers discovered ancient Sanskrit documents in Lhasa, Tibet, dating back thousands of years. The ancient texts were sent to Indian scholars for translation. What they discovered was absolutely shocking. According to Dr. Ruth Reina, the translated texts allegedly are blueprints for the construction of interstellar spaceships. According to the translated documents, the propulsion system designed for the spaceships was based on anti-gravitational technology, and based on a system analogous to that of Ligma, the unknown power of the ego that exists in man's physiological makeup. A centrifugal force strong enough to counteract all gravitational pull. Interestingly, According to Hindu yogis, the mysterious lady metaphors is what enables people to levitate. Dr. Reina explained that on board these machines, which were called asterisks, the builders of the crafts could have sent a detachment of men to any planet. The manuscripts, however, do not mention how interplanetary communication was achieved, but they do mention a trip from the Earth to the Moon, though it is unclear whether the trip was just planned or actually carried out. However, one of the great Indian epics, the Ramayana, does have a highly detailed story in it, of a trip to the moon in a Vimana or Astra, and in fact details a battle on the moon with an Aspen ship or Atlantean airship. Indian scientists were extremely reserved about the value of these documents, but became less so, when the Chinese announced that certain parts of the information were being studied for inclusion in their space program. But can we actually reverse engineer ancient technology, well depends on what you think is possible. Interestingly, the law of the Babylonians, that Kafa unambiguously states the following. The privilege of operating a flying machine is great. The knowledge of flight is among the most ancient of our inheritance, is a gift from those from upon high. We received it from them, as a means of saving many lives. Here are the thoughts, of Professor Cangelosi observations of the myths Eurona, which talks of flying cities made for demons, and blazing and destructive arrows. He explained them with the following statement. 
The Pushpika of the Mona, was a gigantic plain, the size of a large city, entirely capable of holding unlimited numbers of people, three flying cities were made for, and were used by the demons. One was in a stationary orbit in the sky, another, moving in the sky and one was permanently stationed on the ground. These were docked like modern spaceships in the sky, and at a fixed latitude and longitude. Shiva's arrow, obviously referred to a blazing missile. Fired from a satellite specially built for the purpose. Vestiges of one-time prosperous civilization destroyed in battles flickered through these legends. But is it possible that the ancient Vimanas were built so they could access the planet's natural energy? What if thousands of years ago, ancient flying machines used Earth's natural energy to charge and reload? Is it possible that ancient monuments, like pyramids, were in fact giant energy transmitters that fueled the ancient Vimana and other technology with extraterrestrial origin? Interestingly, stone, like metal, can be charged and is able to carry out electrical charges. What if ancient sites on Earth were specifically placed on so-called magnetic door Texas or electrified lines? What if there is a far greater meaning to the countless number of ancient Indian pyramids, monoliths, megalithic statues, obelisks and totems? And what if all of these structures not only from ancient India but different civilizations around the world had a special scientific purpose to transmit vast amounts of energy? Many researchers argue that intricate ancient stonework, attributed to the Incas, Egyptians, East Indians, Malians and other ancient civilizations, has a specific purpose and was not only aesthetic in nature. It is noteworthy to mention, that many consider the Great Pyramid of Giza, as one of the best examples of ancient energy machines. It was a Tesla-like power plant, created thousands of years ago. It was a huge ancient structure that was capable of using the Earth's natural properties in order to create or produce a great amount of energy. This energy is believed to have been used by the ancient Egyptians and other cultures. This theory, however, has been firmly rejected by mainstream scientists. If we approach the history of ancient civilizations from another perspective, we will encounter that ancient civilizations around the globe were in fact extremely sophisticated, and used advanced technologies, thousands of years before mainstream science reinvented them. These advanced technologies, were present in ancient Egypt, ancient Sumeria, and in North Central and South America. Electricity electrochemistry, electromagnetic technology, metallurgy, advanced engineering, including hydrogeology, chemistry, physics and advanced forms of mathematics and astronomy, were all used thousands of years ago to great extents. Thank you for watching. Please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe.